Hey guys, welcome back to 31 Days of Pompoween. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Pompberry and I absolutely love Halloween and so I like to celebrate all month long by posting one Halloween tutorial a day during the month of October. Also, since you're new here, you should probably check out the other videos that I've already done this month in this playlist right here. And if you're not new, then welcome back. It's great to see you again. Today, I'm gonna be doing something that was very much a part of my childhood and that formed the person I am today. Day. That might sound a little dramatic, but it is very, very true. Today, I'm going to be doing Diablo from the video game of the same name. And I say this for me as a person because I used to watch my dad and my older brother play this game when I was like five years old. I'd sit by their side and I'd watch them play and I was terrified. It scared me to no end, but I was fascinated. I was so, so fascinated with it. And I remember I tried to play when I was a little bit older, like probably six or seven, and I couldn't do it. I was just so scared, even though I had watched them playing the entire game. But because of that, because I was so fascinated, it got me interested in video games. And I grew up playing video games my entire life. My brother played them, my dad played them. And so it was just a part of our day-to-day -day life. And it made me the little nerd. I am today and also probably one of the reasons I love the fantasy genre although that's also thanks to Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and all that good stuff but yeah I thought I'd throw it back I don't know why this idea just kind of came to me and so I'm going to be doing the cover of the first Diablo game and I'm not gonna give away too much but if you like Diablo then maybe come back tomorrow and the day after that cuz cuz I think you'll like those videos not gonna say anymore but just have a feeling you'll like those too <laughs> So I'm gonna get to it, but before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit that bell button if you wanna be notified every time I upload. As I said, this month I'm uploading every single day, and there's so much good stuff coming your way, you don't wanna miss out. So I've already gone ahead and covered up my eyebrows. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to leave a tutorial linked right up here. I have a whole video teaching you how to do that. I'm gonna start off by protecting my skin with Dermashield, just because my skin is really breaking out right now and I think it's because of all the face paint I've been using. Face paints aren't that great for your skin. I don't recommend using them every single day. So I am going to protect my skin using this and you just gotta shake it up. It's a little foam. There you go. My skin's just really sensitive. Yours might not be. You might not have to do this. And normally I wouldn't do this but because I have been painting my face almost every single day, that does take its toll on your skin. So skincare and skin protection is very important if you're doing a lot of makeup on your face. So in order for me to get the proportions right for this makeup look, I put the image that I'm referencing on a face chart of mine. I have a digital face chart that I created basically by taking a picture of my face, looking straight forward, and then just tracing the outlines. And then I superimpose that with the reference image and so I can figure out the proportions so that I can paint them on my face. That's the easiest way to figure out proportions is by literally just copying it and pasting it onto your face. So I'm gonna be using that as a reference and I'm going to take my Wolf Face Effects palette. This is water activated paint, and I'm gonna use the red to do the initial mapping of the shapes on my face. So he has very non-human proportions. His eyes are pretty close together and his nose is really close to his eyes and his mouth is huge. So I'm definitely going to try to hide my own features within this makeup. His eyes, I'm probably gonna have to do them above my own, kind of like in my crease. It's gonna be like a weird area thing, but I think the eye is gonna go there and then all this is gonna be black, which is good because then I can hide my eyelashes. And then down here, there's going to be like an eye bag situation. I love that for me. So that means that his nose is going to be like right up here because it's right next to these eye bags, honestly. His mouth is going to be on my nose. It starts over here and he's got like big old teeth. And I'm using red, but there's a lot of orange in the tones of his skin and all that. I'm just using red as a starting point. And then his teeth are over here. So that's where the top of the mouth is gonna go, and then his bottom teeth are gonna be right under my nose. And I'm gonna be able to hide my nose in the black of the mouth. So I tried to scale the image in a way where I could really hide my own features. So there's gonna be... Ooh, that tickles. 
Ah, there's gonna be some stuff happening over here with his chin. He's got a very small chin. His head is basically like an inverted triangle. So it's going to be very narrow here and then super wide at the top. So I'm just trying to get the proportions planned out right. I know this looks really confusing. You probably can't really tell what's going on, but if you compare it to the reference image, you'll probably be able to tell. This is the mouth, this is the nose. I haven't drawn in the eyes yet because they're yellow. I don't want to put any red around it so that it won't mix in with the yellow later and turn into orange. I want it to be really pure yellow. But now I'm gonna take the orange from my wolf palette so I can start filling all this in. I'm just starting from where I find is like easiest, kind of where it's like a block of color. I'm gonna paint into my hair because it's easy enough to wash out, so. I just want the face to kind of fade to black, so I am gonna be filling this in with black. I don't have like the full Diablo getup. I don't have crazy horns or, you know, the whole body area. He's got really, really thick neck. So I'm just doing what I can with paint, and that's why I just wanna fade out to black. And I know I said I grew up with Diablo, but I grew up with, honestly, all the Blizzard games. My brother was addicted to StarCraft. I never really got into StarCraft, but I love Kerrigan. Like, I've always been in love with Kerrigan. Like, honestly, on my bucket list was, like, see the Kerrigan statue that Blizzard made, and I almost cried when I got to see her at BlizzCon. When I went a few years ago, I just honestly love Blizzard. I don't play Overwatch. That's because I have a Mac, and I'm not about to do some weird shit to it just so I can play this one game, but also it feels very un-Blizzard to me. As a game, I much prefer old school Blizzard, to be honest. I grew up playing World of Warcraft as well, and my brother was also addicted to Warcraft, so I'd always watch him play. So, you know, Blizzard was just kind of a part of our lives. So I'm just following the reference picture, that's all I'm doing. I'm doing the light colored paint first before I do the black, so that it doesn't accidentally mix in with the black and then turn muddy and dark and I can use the black to correct everything and make the line super precise. So I always like to use the darker color last. Now I'm gonna take the Makeup Forever color cream in the color M704, it's the red, and I'm gonna use that to start shading certain areas. So the orange was kind of like my mid-tone and that's why I started with it. The red is kind of gonna be the shading color. It all depends on the reference you look at, honestly. Some references, he's just bright primary red and in others, he's more orange. But I do remember seeing this cover of this game as a kid and he was very, very red for sure he wasn't orange and I'll definitely be doing some further shading with black honestly just kind of look like a lobster right now there's still a lot more detailing that has to be done, a lot of highlighting, a lot of shading, but I'm going to start filling in the black. And I'm also gonna use it to shade as well. So I'm going in with my Wolf Water Activated Face Paint. Oh, and I also extended these guys to the sides of my neck, just to continue, and then eventually I'm gonna fade that to black too. So you just gotta drop a few drops of water, mix it up to activate it. And I'm just gonna start by filling in the big blocks of black that have absolutely no detailing in them. I'm actually going to use a bigger brush for that and I'm not going all the way to the edge of the red because I'm going to use a smaller brush to really be precise with cleaning up that outline. That kind of also helps me to see if I need to change anything up. I look crazy! Also now I'm going to be hiding my nose so that can go. Oh yes. You'll have to paint in your nose to properly hide it. There you go, it's already kind of gone. Then I'm gonna take that on a big flat brush and just paint down my neck. I forgot to do some red stuff right here. Then I'm just gonna paint around that. Don't forget your ears. Now I am gonna paint in the eyes and I'm using the Suva Beauty Hydra Liner in the color Dance Party. This is a neon yellow liner, but his eyes are pretty bright yellow, so I thought neon would be fitting. And you just need to mix that with a drop of water as well. It's basically like a face paint. And then I'm just going to also just roughly sketch that out. And the other eye is going here. And there's some red stuff happening here and happening under the eye. I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush now and be more precise with my black. So we'll just create the sharp edges. 
And if you mess anything up, you can just take a Q-tip while it's still wet, or you can just wet the Q-tip, and it's a super easy cleanup. It's basically just a game of fill in the blanks at this point. Now I'm taking a small liner brush so that I can go in and do the contours of the little areas like the teeth. It's still very much a work in progress. There's still a lot of skin peeking through. In the end, there won't be any skin peeking through. The middle of the teeth are black. It'll make sense. It just gives them a bit of volume. This part, it's important to take your time to get all the proportions right. Because if you get this part right, then all you gotta do is some highlighting and shading within the red parts and that's it. So I've got most of the black filled in. Gotta do my eyelids around my eyes in general. And then I can finally start the proper shading and highlighting, which will really pull this all together. So now you can still see that there are some gaps between the black and the red. And the reason for that is that I'm going to slowly blend the black onto these red areas. And I'm gonna do that by drying off my brush, kind of cleaning it off so that I can use more of a dry brush technique so that I can slowly just kind of blend the black onto the red, just blurring that edge. I don't want a super sharp edge like I've got here, for example. I just want a slow gradient. I'm gonna be doing that for most of this, especially here on the upper lip. If your brush gets too dried out or with very little product, you can always go in and grab a little bit more, but be careful not to really wet your brush. That's the key to this technique, is your brush has to be damp at the most, and you can see you can slowly blend that together. And here on the chin especially, I didn't really fill this in with black because I was waiting to do this, so I'm just gonna slowly just blend that black down. And there's kind of a line there, a line here and a line here. Do that here on these horns on the chin. I'm gonna do it at the roots of the teeth. Now that I've done that with the black, I'm gonna do it with the orange and further blend those two together. And I'm missing some red in a few spots, I'm just going back. And I'm letting the red mix into the black so that I can get some more variation in the tones, so I can get a better blend. And be mindful if your brush starts getting too dirty with the black, you have to clean it up before you keep using it. You can see it can get really beautiful blends. So I keep going between the black, the red, and the orange to really just make that happen. Using the red from the Wolf palette right now, by the way, so I found that it is blending in with the black a little bit better. Now, the only part I haven't painted black is around the eyes, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Then I'm gonna fill in this under eye area. Okay, I feel like it's getting there. Now I'm actually going to take a little bit of translucent powder just to stop all this reflection from happening that's kind of taking away from being able to see the illusion properly. And then I'm gonna take the yellow from my Wolf palette to do some further highlighting all around the face. He doesn't necessarily have yellow highlights, but the consistency of red face paint is different from other face paints. It like isn't super opaque. It's more like a sheer paint. It's more like a stain rather than a paint, if that makes sense. And so the yellow has a lot of opacity to it, so I'm just using that to brighten up certain areas. Do that especially on the upper lip. It's got a bunch of like little highlights all around. And here he actually does have a yellow highlight over this brown. It's the same color as the eyes, so I'm going to go in with the neon yellow afterwards. But everything's looking really flat, so I'm just trying to bring out some more dimension into the whole design. Highlights usually really help with that. Then I'm just really filling in the eye more precisely doing a second layer of the yellow, and then also applying that to the little eyebrow situation we've got going on right above it. Then I'm gonna take that yellow and just do a few little highlights here and there. 
I took a selfie on my phone and I realized that my ears kind of line up perfectly with the side of his cheekbones. And so I think if I paint them red, it will kind of look like it's a continuation of his face. So it'll work out in my favor. So I'm just gonna do that first coat and then I'll go back in with the orange and the yellow to highlight and all that. Now that that's dry, I'm going in with some orange. Then I'm taking the yellow, whoa, that's really intense, and just lightly highlighting. But it kind of really looks like an ear. So I'm going to black out some areas, just blend that. Now I feel like we're almost there. I'm just going to take some sugar pill eyeshadows. I'm gonna be using the red, the orange, and the yellow. And I'm just going to really intensify everything. I'm starting with the yellow, and I'm just gonna pat it over things. Going in with the orange, and that kind of smooths it out, but also really intensifies it. So I'm just gonna do that like all over. And then the red can go over the edges just to soften them even more and add intensity to the colors. And it's good to use a powder product, especially on the eyelids, because it will help to stop creasing. And you can see the eyeshadow also helps to take away some of the shine, which is great. We want this to be as matte as possible. So if you played Diablo, who did you play as? So Diablo 1, there were only three classes, warrior, rogue, and sorcerer. I think my brother and father always played as warrior, maybe sorcerer. I think I played sorcerer when I did play it, but Diablo 2 was their favorite and they played it for years and years and I eventually did play it as well. My dad was always a paladin. Whenever he plays a game, if there's a paladin option, he will play it. That's the only option for him. My brother, on the other hand, always played as a necromancer and my dad would always get really, really mad because he'd say that my brother was cheating because he always had an army of undead helping him defeat all the bosses and everything. So it was this kind of ongoing joke that my brother was always cheating because he played as a necromancer. My dad thought it was super unfair that he got all the extra help, which I always thought was hilarious. And my brother always got the best drops. Like he always found the rarest items ever. And so my dad was just constantly frustrated, but it was all in good fun. When I played, I always played as a female character. To this day, if there's an option of a female character, I will choose it. That's just always been the case. So I think I played as the Amazon for a bit, and I think I also tried the Sorceress, but I always really enjoyed watching my brother and father play it and seeing their little playful spat. Now I'm gonna take the Melt Gemini palette and I'm just going to use Bonnie, which is the black. I'm just going to use that to go over the black areas just to mattify it. See the difference that makes? I just wanna mattify all this black. And face paint is something that you don't have to set, but obviously I'm just doing this so I can get rid of the shine. And it can help fade out some things too. I can blend it. I'm also taking it on a smaller brush so I can get into like the smaller areas, obviously, like around my eyes and in between the shapes. I'm also using it to shade in certain areas that I couldn't really get right with the face paint. You just get a smoother blend with the eyeshadow, obviously, so just doing a little bit of that here and there. I think this is pretty much done. I'm going to put on a thing that conceals my hair and some horns and then see how it's looking and if I have to make any adjustments. So I still have to cover up my body. I'm just gonna put on like a black sweater, but I do want to make the horns match the face a bit more. So I'm just gonna use my face paint. This is good because I can just wipe it off later and I'm just taking the orange. I'm taking the orange and just running it kind of down the center and just lightly paint it just so it will hopefully match a little bit better. And then I think I'm gonna take a little bit of the neon yellow, just do very small highlights. And this is the finished look. I also put some gels on my light behind me so that I'd get yellow and orange reflections on my horns. And I think that adds a cool little detail and it also helps the horns to match the face a little bit better. This took me between five and six hours to do, so it's not super quick, but it's also not that bad compared to other looks that I've done. 
and it's actually quite fun. It doesn't look like much until the very end. It looked like it wasn't going to work out for most of it. And then at the very end, once you get the highlights going and all that, it kind of really brings it all together. And it really works as soon as you close your eyes. Dressing up like Diablo is always an awesome idea. I think it's kind of out of the box since it's a more old school game. I know that Diablo 3 is somewhat recent, but I don't know if it's still relevant, but it's still a Blizzard game. I think it'll always kind of be relevant. At least I hope so anyway. But I hope you guys like this. I guess this was more of like an illusion look than a normal Halloween costume idea, but I thought it would be something fun to throw in the mix. And as I said in the beginning of the video, if you enjoyed this one and if you enjoyed Diablo, then stay tuned for the next couple of days because I think you'll really like those videos too. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all my patrons who support me and who made Pompoween possible. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for another day of Pompoween. I'll see you then. Bye.